I would like everyone to say hello to our friends Nora and Love, who will be playing their favorite games while we talk. And Nora is six years old and loves Tokaboka games. And I'm going to ask her what she enjoys the most playing those games. Vad gillar du bäst, Nora, med att spela Tokaboka? To play the doctor game. And Luve is 13 and plays Minecraft. But how much time does he spend playing this game? Hur lång tid lägger du? Eller hur mycket, mycket tid lägger du att spela spel överhuvudtaget? Three hours a day. And this, of course, is no surprise. Um, did you know a child growing up today will spend as much time playing games as sitting in school? And nowadays we play games throughout the day. And I suspect a few of you in the audience will be playing games instead of listening. So we decided to have a couple of games on the stage as well to keep you company. But even if this situation is slightly new, with us be being able to carry games with us like you guys do, uh, can you... ...play games? Can you remember a time in your life when you did not play games? Well, you can't, can you? Playing games is something that defines us as human beings. Not only are we playing games that other animals play, like hiding and chasing and wrestling, we're also playing games that we invented to be just games. Actually, we have a history of inventing games that is as old as our species. And that's something that's quite funny to think about. Now, the past two years, we've talked a lot about gamification. But really, games has been tightly intertwined with our culture since the beginning of time. Many of the first games evolved from religious rites. Seers, priests and others who tried to predict the future mainly used strategies that are similar to games. And still, to this day, Seers throw, throw dice or pick cards from a deck before they tell you that you will meet a dark, handsome stranger when you're eating dinner at McDonald's later tonight. And now you're thinking, I'm not eating dinner at McDonald's later tonight. One of the first games that we know of is called Senate. This was played as early as 3200 BC, and here we have Queen Nefertiti playing a game. Now, Senate had a symbolic, a mystical significance. The movement on the board symbolized the transition of the human spirit towards a new life beyond death, which meant that if you could master this game in your lifetime, you were well prepared for your new life after you died. So the stakes were much higher playing Senate than, than playing Toka Boka. No offense to you, Björn. And by the way, Senate became immortal in itself because it involved into backgammon that it's still used today. Now, in what culture do we find a game like this celebrated by the Queen? It is hard to imagine our own Queen being pictured like this. <laughs> On her grave. And the answer, of course, is a culture where many things not meant to be games were actually built like games. And here's a question for, for you. Is the pyramid a game? Well, it certainly looks like one. We have this unique, out-of-this-world architecture, not similar to, to anything else. And when you enter the pyramid, you enter it the same way you would enter a game. First, you have to find the secret entrance. Then you're instantly, of course, led in the wrong direction towards a fake tomb. 
and to find the right tomb, you ha will have to find another secret entrance and, of course, fight mythology on your way. The tomb is guarded by traps and curses that just might kill you. But if you succeed, you will find a treasure. And standing in the tomb, you're actually standing in the place where the dead king leaves this world. And today we would say that this is the place where you move on to the next level. Now we might ask ourselves if it is the pyramid that looks like our games, or if it is our games that reminds us of the pyramid. And you might add, what on earth is all this telling us? Well, my, maybe that life and culture and games always have been intertwined. In Egypt, people played senate to prepare themselves for life after death. And what nearly all games have in common throughout history is that they can be used as metaphors for society and for everyday life. And from our time, the most obvious example of this is chess. Chess has again and again been used as a symbol for war and for politics. And for instance, the Nazis were fascinated by this, this game. They regarded it as a, as a game of, of discipline and purity. And they even invented their own version of chess called tactique, from tactics, replacing the pawns and the towers with soldiers and bombs and air force pieces and marketing to the kids. Möchte sie ein Party Taktik spielen? Ja, mein junger Herr, das ist ein super Game. Something like that. Now, the, the Nazis transformation of the game into propaganda, which it was, was picked up immediately after the war by the Soviets, who used chess as a brick in the new war, the Cold War. And when Bobby Fischer in 1971 became the first American to have a go at a title as world champion in chess, the game quickly turned into an image of the co conflict between East and West. Now, the reason I think for using games as a metaphor for life around us is that we need different ways of dealing with the things we go through. This might even be the reason why we play games in the first place. Most of the games that we know of from history presents an augmented reality in that way that you either win or you lose. That makes the world of games rather black and white. And for kids, growing up means a lot of complexity. Every day they meet new challenges from the world around them. And playing games is a way of meeting all these questions with simple answers. There can be a way to win it all. There can be a way to replace doubt with positive emotions and a feeling of fulfillment. And that's what games offer. So if the history of games teaches us one thing, it is while playing games, we deal with life. Playing games, we deal with life. And I suspect that the future of game, games, at least from an industry point of view, lies in finding different aspects of life that we haven't dealt with yet. Thank you.